30 days ago, I came to Morocco to experience the holy month of Ramadan here. When I first arrived, I didn't really know anyone here and was really afraid that this would end up being a pretty lonely month. But despite my fears, I've always been so curious about what the holy month is like around the world and how it differs from my Pakistani household. And to be honest, I really couldn't find any YouTube videos on it online, so I had to come see for myself. Let's just say it's been an eye-opening experience. And today, I'm going to take you along with me and give you a glimpse into what my Ramadan experience has been like in Morocco. From Sahur to Juma to shopping in the souks, and best of all, iftar with the local family. It's going to be an exciting day filled with lots of fun. So on that note, let's get started. It's 4.30 a.m. I just will go for Suhu and um, to eat stomach fast. Usually for me, Suhu tends to be a pretty big meal. I mean, considering I'm about to fast for the next 15 hours, it makes sense to eat a lot. But here in Morocco, these guys practically have snacks. A small glass of yogurt, some bread, and water. Lots of water. And then you wait and listen closely until you finally hear it. The call to prayer. This is one of my favorite things about being in a Muslim country. Even at 5 a.m., when the streets are empty, you'll see people making their way over to the mosque. Which conveniently for me, is right around the corner from where I live. That means I'm able to attend every prayer here if I want to. So who is complete? Now, I can go back to sleep. It's 9 a.m. I just woke up. I kind of want to go back to sleep, but... I gotta work on this video, so... Yeah, give me one sec. Oh hey, nice to see you again. Let me give you a quick tour of where I've been staying. This is my Marrakech Jewish hostel where I spent most of Ramadan. For $8 a night, this place ain't bad. It's a beautifully bright Riyadh with vibrant colors all over the walls, paintings of these random women who I honestly to this day don't know who they are. And the staff is so nice. All right, so we got Ahmed. Azul. And then we got Ali. Salam alaikum. And we got nice shit of the love. Salam. In this room right here is where the magic happens. I'm kidding, guys. I wasn't actually sleeping. It was. It was just a funny bit. Okay, um, let's just let's just go to the terrace. All right. So yeah, this is the terrace. It's a great place to just vibe out. I come out here to journal or just chat with friends and the sunset from here is absolutely breathtaking. They got plenty of areas to hang out, chill. This is a very typical Moroccan setup, you know, even if you look at like the, the tile tables and like, I don't know what the purpose of this thing is, but it's here. It's cool. It looks pretty. Now, it's time to get ready for test number two. It's 11.47 and right now I am walking over to Qutubia Mosque to attend Jamal on the final day of Ramadan. Let's go. This is Jami Efna Square. I think that's what it's called. And it's always essentially like this 24 seven. It's this loud, this buzzing. And I'm pretty sure after Ramadan, it's gonna be even more hectic. And at night, it's even nicer. So yeah, right now it's Kutubia Mosque in front of us. And I'm heading over. So this right here behind me is the beautiful Kutubia Mosque. This is one of those places you see on postcards here in Morocco, but it's so beautiful and it's very old as well. All right, so we're about to attend Juma right now with my friend Hamza. Hello. Hamza was the first person to welcome me into his home for iftar, so I'm grateful yeah. to be here oh, with him cool. for Juma. All right, bro, let's go in. You yeah. lead the way, you're the boss. Fine, yeah, yeah. So this is the inside of the beautiful Kutubia Mosque. Is this like the largest mosque in, uh, in, Mar uh, in Marrakesh, right? Yeah. Second largest in Morocco? Yeah. Second. There is Mulay Yazid. It's big also. It's ah, beautiful. okay, okay. Uh, this is courtyard of the Kutubia Mosque. You know, this always makes me feel like I'm in an oasis. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah, like, like I'm in a desert and this is like an oasis I stumbled onto. And right there in the middle is where people usually make uh, wudu. Okay. Essentially, so there's fresh water that comes and then people like get rid of the dirty water in like that little canal area there. Are you making wudu here?
Alright, Juma is now complete and now we go find a Jalaba. So we arrived to the souks and now the search for my Jalaba begins. Let's see what we can find. So the reason why I need a Jalaba is because tomorrow is Eid and I only have one right now and I would like to get a special one for Eid. You know, I want to look extra nice. So that's why we're searching for one right now. As you can see, it's quite crowded. A lot of commotion. But this is what Marrakesh is like. Let's see what else they have to offer. It's cool, but I don't know. I just don't like the color. You can try it, yeah. Yeah, I can try it on. It's more, yeah. Yeah. Good. This is 180, which would cost me around 18 dollars. Is it possible to do 150 for this? Yeah, but eat, eat, eat discount, eat discount. Okay, look to 100 discount. No problem. Ramadan discount, you know. 170. 170? Okay, Hamza, what do you think? Good price. All right, if Hamza says a good price, all right, let's do it. All right, Jalla is secured. Now we're headed back to the hostel. On the bike, let's go! So usually around this time, I usually take a break, take a nap, do some work and just kind of relax because you know the sun is out, it's hot and still lots of time to the tour and today I'm feeling extra tired because I stayed up till so we're so just gonna, you know, chill. I'm probably not gonna chill, I got videos to edit. <sighs> While President Maha does some work, let me tell you a quick story. When I first arrived to Morocco, I didn't know anyone here and genuinely thought that this will be the loneliest Ramadan of my life. So I made a video in the hopes of documenting my experiences to show people what Ramadan in Morocco is truly like. And it kind of went viral. I received hundreds of messages from all over Morocco with people ready to welcome me into their homes. So this last week of Ramadan, every day, I've been having iftar with a local from Marrakesh. And today, I'm gonna be breaking fast with my good friend Ali. Ali was the first friend I made when I arrived to Marrakesh. This man literally gave me the Jalaba off his back when I complimented it. So today, getting a chance to meet him and his family is something I'm really looking forward to. Let's go. Alright, so it's a Thar time and I arrived to Ali's home. So this is this is the man himself, Ali right here. How's it going bro? Alhamdulillah. And of course we have Madeline right there. Say hello Madeline. Is this Ali's mom? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. How are you? Shukran, shukran. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, okay. All right, that's bad. Yeah, exactly. Like my son. Ah, shukran, shukran. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're about to get a quick tour of Ali's home right now. All right, bro, let's go. That's where all the magic, Moroccan house music. Ah, got it. And that's the backyard. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, I didn't know you had like a backyard that was. Breakfast. Nice. After the eat, we yeah, all yeah. sat here and have breakfast here in this area. This is nice. But the trees keep it cool. It is, I. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sitting area. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the kids Craziness. going crazy over here. Yeah. Look at that. What's going on here? <laughs> this is like a small you have door. The first door. What is the purpose of small door? Small door is kind of for us. Okay. For it's people who live in the house, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to people like um, visiting or anything, yeah, yeah. we open we open the big door so that open your heart. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it's a bigger door. Open all the door. You slide it. Ah, okay, open okay. All up, and then you close this one up. Mm -hmm. Other ones open. So yeah, yeah, it looks beautiful from here. Especially with the The tiles, right? The tiles, man. Yeah. Oh my god, it looks so delicious. We got the kids. What was your name again? No. No, and then Ahmed? Adam. Yes. Adam. No. Adam. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Adam, okay, okay. And then we have the Dream. 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 Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we got Madeline over here. Yeah. And then we got the big man himself. <laughs> All right. After a long day, we were excited to finally eat the delicious food Ali's mother had made for us. After iftar, we prayed, and then as always, just enjoyed each other's companies. It's always so effortless talking to these two, and being in the comfort of their home made it even better. This was really a special experience for me, and alongside Ali and his family, I truly felt right at home. We had an eventful night filled with lots of deep conversations, 
they taught me the squat toilet form, which for some reason I just can't get right. And once the kids who we thought had a never ending supply of energy finally knocked out, we decided to go out for some late night right, munches. So it's currently 3 a.m. and we're about to go for a food run. Look at this man with his snag his jacket on. And there we were, eating some greasy street food at 4 a.m. on a patch of grass in front of a gas station. This truly sums up my Moroccan experience. The Ramadan I thought would be the loneliest ended up being one of the most memorable experiences ever.